What's up friends, Dan Vega here back with another tutorial and today we are talking about HTTP interfaces in Spring Boot 3. More specifically, I was recently giving a presentation to a really great group on this feature and one of the questions that came up was how do I add headers to requests? Maybe it's a single request, how do I add a header and a value? Or what if I wanted to send along a header in all of the requests that we send to that service? So that I thought was a really great question and I thought a really good topic for us to cover here on the channel. So that's exactly what we're gonna do today. Now, remember, this is a service within a Spring application that is going to be calling out to another service in your organization, microservice, public API. So the other question that comes up naturally is how do I monitor what headers are getting sent? Normally, if I'm in a browser application, I can open up the dev tools and see what the request and the response looks like. How can I monitor that? So those are the things we're gonna look at today. I think we'll have a lot of fun with this. If you're new to Spring Boot 3, HTTP interfaces, I've actually done a video on that. Uh, I will go ahead and leave up in here and the description below. Uh, with that, let's go ahead and write some code. All right, so we're gonna start this project like we do every project over at start.spring.io. I'm going to choose Maven as my build tool, Java as my language, the newest version of Spring Boot, which is 3.1.0. We're gonna go ahead and set up a group of dev.danvega and we'll just call this headers. And we're gonna use Java 17. We're gonna select a couple dependencies. Now, normally uh, I would just go ahead and choose something like Spring Web if I was building out um, some type of REST API. But in this case, I'm also going to need to choose Web Flux, even if I'm not building out kind of a reactive stack. The reason for this is, is the HTTP interfaces feature in, under the hood in Spring Boot uh, uses the uh, reactive web client. So. We need to choose that. Now, there's a little trick to that. It doesn't actually need to be, um, it can be either blocking or non-blocking. We'll see an example of that. So those are really all I need to get started. I'm gonna go ahead and generate my project. Uh, I'll open that up in IntelliJ IDEA and we'll go ahead and get started. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and rename this to application. And with that, I can go ahead and get started. So to do this, I need to build some type of application out here, some type of model. So I'm gonna create a new, uh, let's say Java class. We're gonna create something called a post. This is going to be a record in the model package. So let's do that. And I just have a little snippet here to kind of um, Go ahead and create this for us. So this is a record of post. Now I'm using uh, an integer ID, an integer user ID, a string title, and a string body. We're, so we're representing a blog post. And I'm doing this because of the service that we're gonna call uh, lines up with this. So uh, let's go ahead and create a new package and we'll call this service. Let's head over to the browser. I'm going to take a look at this thing, this service called JSON placeholder. And again, this is just an API out there that, that I can go ahead and test. Um, I can make a call to it and this will allow us to see HTTP interfaces working and then take a look at how we can uh, examine the headers. So we have these different resources here, one of which is a slash posts. And you can see this is why I lined up that record to look like that. It has an ID, a user ID, a title, and a body. Uh, so with that in place, I think we can go ahead and create a JSON placeholder service. So let's create a new Java class. We're gonna call this JSON placeholder service. And again, this is going to be an interface. So we're creating an interface and we need to make a call to whatever the base URL, so back to the browser. So the base URL is gonna be json placeholder.typicode.com and then the call to slash posts is slash posts. So we're gonna set up the base URL when we configure our kind of client. Here in this one, we are just going to make a call to load all the posts, to get all the posts. So let's say that this is a git exchange to slash posts. And this is where um, really defining the return type is going to determine whether or not this is a blocking or a non-blocking call. If you wanted a non-blocking call, you could do something like flux of posts, and now the web client will see this underneath the hood and make this a asynchronous call. In our case, we don't care. Um, I'm just gonna get back a list of posts. We're gonna call this find all, 
and that's all we need. So let's go ahead and pull that out. And this is a good start. So now we need to just do a, a little plumbing here. And again, I have an IntelliJ Live template for this because I never remember how to type this out. And again, I hope this, this is something in the future that we can kind of configure to make easier on everyone. But for now, uh, do what I do. Just create an IntelliJ Live template or whatever uh, ID you're using, a, a little shortcut for you. So what we're doing is we're, we're returning the JSON placeholder service. So we key, create a new web client. Uh, so web client builder. We set up that base URL that we saw, and then we build that. From there, we create an HTTP service proxy factory. Uh, we can see that we pass in that client, and then we return the factory create client, and we're going to pass in our JSON placeholder service. So now anywhere we want the JSON placeholder service, we can just ask for it. It's been created as a bean. It's in the application context, right? Uh, so this is a good start. So now what I can do is I can come into, um, say here, uh, let's go ahead and create maybe a new bean. So uh, we'll call this a command line runner, command line runner, and we're going to take in our JSON placeholder service. We'll call this a client. This is going to return args. And all I want to do is call the client.findAll method. I'm going to go ahead and stream that, and then for each, I just want to go ahead, system.out, and we're just going to print lines. We're going to print line for each. Let's see if this works. All right, and each of those looks like they got printed out. So it has the post, which has the ID, user ID, title, and then you can see the body on some of these is running a couple lines long. So that is 100 posts that we're pulling and printing out. So this is a great start, but now the question comes when uh, I'm in my JSON players placeholder service. Um, now, so I could have you know multiple methods in here, one for something like slash post slash ID. You know, um, you could have like get put whatever. We have a whole bunch of methods in our service here. I'm just going to use this one, but. What if you wanted to send a specific header for just this method? So when we call find all, we want to send a request header along with the request. Or what if you wanted to send a header and a value for all of the, all of the requests? So these are the two scenarios we're going to take a look at now. All right, so the first way that we're going to add a header to this request is by adding an argument to this method. So we'll add the request header annotation, and if we go ahead and look at that annotation, we can see that this is an annotation which indicates that a method parameter should be bound to a web request header. So you can have, uh, if the method parameter is a map of string of string, a multi-value map string of string, or an HTTP headers, then the map is populated with all header names and values. So that looks like that is something that will work for us here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to come in here and say we're going to take in a map of string string, and we'll just call this headers. So now back in application, I want to do something uh, when I call find all. So let's just go ahead and move this down and move this down. And I need to pass an argument here. So what I'll do is just say map.of, and now I want to pass in the header and the value. So I'm just going to create my own here. We'll call this x powered by, and we'll pass in uh, spring framework 6. All right, so now let's go ahead and try and rerun this and see if we can't see this in action. So a whole bunch of things going on up there, but let's go past that. And if we come up here, we should see. So we are unable started. All right, and I'm going to clean this up. Um, I'm just going to not actually print all those out. Uh, that way we don't have to see all of that in the council there. So let's go ahead and run that and see if we see anything. And we don't see anything. So what's going on here? Um, well, first off, we are probably sending this along with the request, but we have no idea if we are or not. So how can we resolve that? One way that I'm going to do that is by going into my application.properties here. And what I want to do is set a logging level 
for our web application. So I'm going to say logging level for uh, org dot spring framework dot web and I'm going to set that to trace. So let's do that. Uh, come back over to application and let's rerun that application. Okay, a little bit more going on and there are all of our calls, which we didn't want to see anyway, but now if we come back up here, let's see here, we can see some things going on. So um, we see that we resolved the request header value X powered by Spring Framework 6. So um, we see the response that came back. Um, we know that request header should be there, but we also see that our HTTP get to that uh, has a headers of and it's masked. Hmm. So we want to actually see what the request headers are. Even though it says it resolved that, I'd like to see what that headers looks like. All right, so here's a quick way that you can make a change. I'm going to add this uh, configuration here to our web client. Uh, so we're just setting the exchange strategies. Uh, we're changing the codex, and we're saying, hey, go ahead and enable logging request details and set it to true. Build that, and then from here, we can go ahead and build our client. There is a property for this in application.properties, um, so that, that's another approach that you could take if you'd like. So I'm just setting this here. Let's go ahead and rerun the application and let's see if we can't see some details on that request now. So if I go in here and I come back over, uh, we can see that our headers are now being displayed. So X powered by uh, is the header, the value is Spring Framework 6. Cool, so that, that worked, that's really great, but now remember, this is only going to happen for this particular request. What if you wanted to send a request header for every single request in this JSON placeholder service? How can we do that? Pretty simple, we actually just need to go into the client configuration here and set a default header, not a default cookie, Dan, default header, and then we give it a uh, header and a value. So let's say that we wanted to set the spring boot version is equal to right now 3.1.0. All right, so let's go ahead and save that and rerun this. Okay, we're gonna go back up to here and take a look at the headers. Now we see the headers for that request have Spring Boot version 3.1.0 and X powered by Spring Framework 6. So cool, that was it. Um, I got a question around this. I thought it was a really good question and something that everyone might be interested in knowing. Uh, but ultimately, if you're using HTTP interface clients in Spring Framework 6, Spring Boot 3, and you need to make a call out, how do I add a header? There are a couple different ways. You can do it for every single request like we have here. You can do it for a single request by adding the request header uh, annotation uh, to the method that you need to send the new request header along with. And then finally, um, just being able to see those details in your logs to make sure that those things are getting set correctly. Go ahead and change your logging level for web to something like trace. And here we are setting those exchange strategies to be able to make sure that we can see the headers. Um, and again, this is something I would not do in production. I would roll, this is just for development to make sure that everything I'm doing here is correct. So cool. Uh, if you found some value in this, friends, please do me a big favor. Uh, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, happy coding. Thank you.